Hello everyone, this is Minecraft Jumping, uh, otherwise known as Retia 11. I'm the maker of maps such as Memory or the Park Tower. If you don't know them, I recommend you check them out. So, what I'm gonna show you today is how I work with jumps when I make maps or when I do runs of the maps. So, let's get started with some little music. So, I have a notation system uh, which can be used to give a name to any jump possible. Uh, basically, how it works, it's a combination of three numbers. Um, for example, this one is a, what I call a 21. What for? Because uh, there are two blocks uh, between the first block where you're gonna jump from and the landing block. So that's two jumps and that's obviously one jump high. So that's a 21. Uh, the third number isn't there because the third number represents uh, if your jump is gonna be twisted to, towards the right or the left. For example, if I start here, this jump will be a 20, uh, 211 because two blocks long, one block high, and one block to the right. Uh, but I don't I don't put um, the third number as a zero because it's easier to say 21. So that's a 21, that's a series of 21, and 21s are pretty easy to just, you know, you can make them pretty easily. Okay, so now 31s, uh, these ones require a better timing see how I fail here uh, because they are longer and you really have to jump off the edge of the of the of the block so that the that's a 31 and the 30s is basically uh, my favorite jump because it's it's not hard but it's not easy because if you jump too long and uh, jump too many 30s in a row you might uh, Desynchronize your, your jumps with the the Siri. I'm gonna explain it. Like, I don't know if you play Sky Grid, but Sky Grid is basically just blocks uh, away, three blocks away from each other. And this is a series of 30s. And if I keep jumping like bunny hopping, eventually I will fall off. And this is why 30s can be dangerous in the long term. But if you can strafe and twist your view, you won't have any problem with that. So that's the notation system. An e another example of the twisted ones, uh, that's uh, 212, because it's... Uh, actually, it's not a 212, it's a 312, that's a 212. Two blocks long, one block high, and two block to the right. So that's a tw 212. Uh, rather easy. Uh, so yeah, and that's a minus 31. I'm gonna explain what, why it's called that way because uh, it's three blocks long. That doesn't change uh, ever, but it's uh, you going down from one block. So that's a minus, and that's a minus 312. Uh, the um, the third number and the first number never change, but the second number, which represent uh, the height, is a minus here because you go down. So that's that's about it. Uh, the other uh, changes you can add to that notation system is if you use ice blocks or cell sand blocks because they affect your momentum. Well, cell, cell sand doesn't really affect your momentum. It's just you just go slower through it, but once you jump, it acts like a normal jump. Like if you if we try here. To do that minus 31. I run slower on the south end, but actually my momentum doesn't get affected when I jump when I jump off. So south sand uh, if you if your starting block is a south sand um, block, then this won't be a minus 31, it will be uh, SS minus 31 for SS4 South Sand, obviously. And ice uh, it's different though because uh, you're, uh, it's kind of 
harder to explain. Your momentum gets a bit uh, boosted when you jump off. Actually, a lot. Boosted a lot. But when you jump on ice, you're like, oh my god, uh, what's happening? You're, you're slower, but when you jump off, you have a huge boost, like usually approximately one block further. So that's pretty nice. So this will be um, star minus 31. So the star is for the ice. Don't ask me why. I like it. Uh, and SS for cell sand. SS minus 31. So that's basically it for naming the jumps. I'm going to put another. Uh, what about far? I like this one. Um, so that's it for the notation system. Uh, now I can give you a few tips on how to control and not fall. So, for example, let's take this series of, of 30s. Uh, as I said earlier, if you jump like bunny hopping, you will eventually fall off. Uh, there is a way to counteract this effect, is just strafing in midair. Like, I'm using the left and right key as I'm in, the, I'm in the air to make my jump trajectory longer. Oh, wait a minute. I don't like night. Uh, to make my trajectory longer, so yeah, you don't fall off. You keep synchronized uh, with the jumps. Uh, another way to do this is to twist your view with your mouse and you do that that way. Although it's a bit harder. Or you can do a combination of both, which is in my opinion the best. Because you have two uh, control parameters to know where you will land. And this is what gives you the most control. Uh, so that's about it. Remember to strafe. Uh, if you think you're gonna jump too far away, like this, well, just do a, a little twist like that. It doesn't seem like a lot, but it is actually a lot. So it will help you control your your jump length and stuff like that. If you're too short, well, just don't touch anything. You just you just need the maximum momentum. But if you're way too too fast, well, you just have to, you know, control where you're landing. Oh, my hitbox just touched the ledge here. It's funny I landed. Um, so that's about it for the basic notation system and how to control your jumps. Now, oh, by the way, uh, I didn't talk about half slabs, but basically, uh, half slabs. You're just gonna put uh, 0.5 instead of one or two or whatever. Just, just add 0.5. That's about it. Uh, so a basic series of jumps you can encounter quite uh, quite frequently in my maps is the the helixes either clockwise, either counterclockwise. So this is a 21 series of jumps and it's it's a helix form and it's counterclockwise. So that's a counterclockwise 21 helix. Uh, I can call it CC21 helix. And it goes like that. Uh, right now I'm using strafe key and uh, rotating my mouse towards like counterclockwise. Uh, so that's how you do it. Uh, let's put another one. Uh, what about? No, I don't like chirp. I, I like mold though. Uh, that's a clockwise one. Uh, I used to prefer clockwise, but now I have no preferences. Once you get used to both, uh, you won't have any preferences. Uh, another thing you can encounter mainly in the Parco Tower is this kind of jump where you have a wall uh, just next to your jump and this is a danger because if you're, if the hitbox of your character is the wall your sprint will run off. Uh, 
maybe you're use like single play commands and use the commands printing, which allows you to just tap once forward and sprint. But even with that, if you touch the wall, your character will potentially fall off because your sprint will go on uh, off. So the, the way to do that, to to deal with it, is just to stay a bit away from the from the wall. You see here how I am standing on the this this uh, half of the of the block. Uh, but if you have a long set, a series of 21s or 30s, you want to strafe, and this is where things get a little harder because you have to strafe uh, left and right as much as possible to adjust it and as you can see you can pretty easily fall. Here you just have 221 so it's not really that much of a big deal but when you, when you have like 12 21s or 30s you, you'll see what I'm talking about. There is a place in um, Jump Skyrun where you have to do such a thing because uh, uh, you have to strafe, otherwise you will fall off. Here a little example of strafe. See how how I just stay far away from the wall to just not touch touch it with my hitbox and and screw up my run my my sprint. Stay off the wall. Ah, oh, I failed it. So as you can see, even guys with a good level in sprinting parkour can can fail. It happens a lot. But that's how you create maps like these, it's to train. So the, the main tips I'm gonna give you to improve your, your parkour is train a lot, um, build yourself a little maps like this one and experiment things. Um, and yeah, be yeah, just just experiments. And you'll see if you train and do that, you'll eventually get get better. The day you can do uh, clockwise or counterclockwise 21 helixes, you'll have a good level. And see how how it went smooth. You can do that for hours. Well, not exactly hours, but uh, so that's about it. Just train a lot, and you'll get better. Training is the key to anything. Yeah, I'm just gonna make the jukebox vomit with CDs. Uh, now I can teach you how to do a few tricks. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, yeah, just make a. Uh, what's that? It's one, two, three. It's three hundred and minus minus three hundred and two, I think. Yeah. So I'm gonna teach you how to to do 360s and tricks. So a basic 360 go like that. Uh, this one was a little sloppy, but you get the point. What you want to do with your 360 is well, this is how I do them. Keep your view a little uh, downwards because it helps you see where you are and when you, where you want to land. So that's a counterclockwise one, and that's a clockwise one. Uh, wait. Did I do? Oh, no, I did another counterclockwise. Let's see. Uh, so th these are easy to perform when you have negative jumps, uh, but when you have like, oh well, you know what? When you have 30s like that, it's also possible. But they, this is harder, and you have to to, to execute it really quickly because. Uh, Doing a 360 slows you down your jump because there is a moment in your jump when you're like you start turning and then uh, you're still holding down sprint and if you just linger too much in that zone of the trick uh, your character will lose forward momentum and you will fall off so that's why you have to be quick uh, when you cross that zone when you're try to land it on the 30 jump. See how like here I just think of too much in the in that little danger zone. Let's see, okay. Well that's how you do 360s, just rotate your view really fast. Uh, by the way, 
uh, you want to set your sensitivity to something high, like I'm at 123%. Uh, In my opinion, it's quite enough, but you have to you'll have to adjust your own uh, setting of sensitivity. Uh, but 125 is just fine for me. Uh, I can teach you how to do uh, tricks in the helixes, though this is much harder. Uh, so there, these are the um, the 270s. So that's a reverse 2170s because you like go uh, the other way, all the other way, and then you land, and then you go that way. So that's a reverse. Let's call it 27, reverse 27, here, okay. And as for the uh, regular 27, it's, it's much harder to execute, so you have to rotate your view really, really fast. And it doesn't look really that great, because you have to move so fast, and it's, it's really hard to perform. I don't usually do them, I prefer reverse, because it's, yeah, easier, easier to perform. See. I, I did one there, but I have to practice my my, my seven uh, twenty sevens. So that's how you do tricks. But yeah, just experiment. Uh, find yourself uh, good maps to to train. Oh, I did another one to train on. Uh, I might put some some links in the description to maps I like to train on. Uh, the area is uh, Power Cool Tower, Jump Skyrun. Uh, my upcoming map, Just Run, is a good example of the diversity. Uh, Across the Land is an, also an excellent map if you're a beginner. Uh, what oh, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Send it. No, 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 go away. Go away, Rain. Thanks. Thanks, Optifine. fine. Uh, the last trick I want to show you is the 180s. They are not that hard to perform, but you you'll have to to strafe a lot, and I mean a lot. Like right now, I'm raping my strafing keys. Uh, so that's about it for parkour. Parkour, sorry, uh, tips. I don't usually use uh, like crazy ass jumps. Like uh, uh, let's see, like this one. That's uh, 312, and this one is is really hard. It's not impossible, but it's really hard. And this is the kind of jump you're gonna encounter in maps like 500 jumps to success, which is a really, really hard map. But if you can go through it once, uh, you'll be really happy with what you did, and this is how you're gonna improve on your parkour. I, j I usually don't use ladders to make parkour because Ladders parkour is really really annoying in my opinion. It's just oh my god that hitbox is just so ridiculously small It's not really fun to work with So yeah So I don't usually put crazy ass jumps in my in my parkour maps. I stick to uh, possible sprinting jumps um, And yeah, that's about it another thing. Yeah fences and Glass panes or iron bars, same thing. Uh, the the hitbox are just oh, oh my god, I can't stand the hitbox of the of the of the fences. Uh, iron bars and glass panes are more you know like consistent, but I can't stand iron fences. Uh, Nether fences or regular fences, they are just retarded. So that, that will uh, wrap up this video, guys. Uh, I hope you liked it, and I hope you will find uh, some useful useful tips in, the, in it. If you want the map, uh, just PM me. I don't think it's worth it. You can do your own. It's just a few blocks. And thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time with uh, another update on Just Run.